welcome down to Fort Park. It's our update, it's our update. It's gonna be our Halloween update today. But we started riding on Hyperion. It is worth noting now that when you walk into the station, that single riders are actually on the right-hand side with main queue on the left, which does kind of make sense. That's a little bit easier to batch where they don't have to cross so many people. Also worth noting that the fountains aren't currently on. I don't know whether that's because of the, um, the, uh, wait for the train, um, the, the kind of the rust effect that it's given the track so might be the reason for them being uh, turned off. Whilst we were here last time, we did ask Kurt to get a sign of the plaque, which he didn't do. But here we go, here's the plaque. There's some of the people. It's really hard to read, actually. It kind of engraved in. But of course, these are the people that put the UK's tallest and fastest roller coaster together. But Hyperion running really, really well today. Before we do move away from the Hyperion area, uh, it is worth noting there are some ride closures coming up which includes Hyperion. We'll go through those a little bit later on. However, the stage has been removed. It doesn't actually feel like the stage was ever supposed to be removed by everything that's been left. It'll be interesting to see what comes here for Halloween. We certainly expect something else to um, come in, but at the moment, the Hyperion stage, the final show has taken place and it's been removed. I do think it's been quite well noted this year, the amount of people that have gone over the bar. I would expect to see permanent fences along here and indeed around the entrance area there. But this is really cool, look, they've got some fans in. Here are the Rumba Rapids. Now then, one of the rides closing early is Rumba Rapids for the season, which is on the 9th of September. So that'll probably be our last ride on it, to be honest with you. I don't think we'll be back before then. Massive speculation online, everyone going, oh my God, I can't believe it. They're gonna rip it out and put something else in. It's, it's shut at that time for the last few years. It's not really a surprise that it's closed. Um, I'm pretty sure it's shut a little bit, tiny bit later last year, but last couple of years it's shut in September and the park have said it's a seasonal ride. It opens usually a little bit later in the season and then closes a little bit earlier. I have to say, it probably hasn't got long left, but there was a lot of work done on the lift hill during the closed season, which we would have seen during our updates. A lot of the wood was replaced and, um, on, on, on the conveyor belt and lots of other work done. So I have to say, you know, why do the work if you're closing it a year later? It just didn't make sense. So I don't expect it to go anywhere. I don't expect much investment, um, heavy, big investment in Fort Park, but uh, yeah, closes the 9th of September. I think when we talk about investment next year, it's very much gonna be finishing some of the sparkle projects which they started this year, and of course the removal of Slammer. Whilst we walk past it though, it is great to see Detonator back open. It was closed last time we were here. It is back. Of course, one of the big updates and things that are going on in the park is indeed Fright Nights. Now, usually at this time of year, you can't walk into this bit because Death's Doors is being prepared, ready for Fright Nights, which leads to speculation of whether or not Death's Doors will be back. I have to say, I thought it was a great concept, worked really, really well with some amazing character sort of interactions, but so far, nothing here. We do have mainly confirmed mazes, which we'll head over to one of our old favourites now. I'm a little bit surprised that Trailers is coming back. I thought it was going to be replaced this year uh, with signage coming down and it not being open for summer, which at the end of the day is, is quite good for them to kind of rake extra money in. That said, I love Trailers. I think it's a cracking maze. And of course we do have a new one for this year as well, which we'll head down to now and see if we can see any progress. We never do kind of look at Slammer closely. We just kind of accept it's here, but you know, there are no restraints left on it. These are disgusting. This is all rusty. I mean, it did come to a sort of um, abrupt end. I say no restraints, there's no lap restraints. The actual over the shoulder ones are still there. The lap ones, I believe, most were used, apart conjunction with Rush. Hey, it's sad what was a great ride, but definitely wouldn't be in a condition to reopen these days. But of course, this has since been Black Mirror and is now removed from Black Mirror and is likely the home. I think it will be the home of the new scare maze. We can see piping, we can see clearance from skips. We can see lots and lots of work going on in the old Black Mirror area, but thus far, no announcement from the park as to what this will be. As we know, it's been used for mazes in the past, from Hellgate to Walking Dead, Cabin in the Woods. There's been a lot of mazes in here, and it's quite a big space when utilized well as well. Love to see some of the mirrors are retained, I have to say. That'd be quite cool for a horror maze. It's definitely a busy day at the park. Now we did highlight last time that the queue line around the back, we did show in our video as well, has actually been covered 
And I thought it was a bit weird. Everyone's like, well, you know, it's to protect from the sun and things. This ride has been here since 2009, and at no point has the sun become a problem. I just find it a bit odd, that's all. Stitches is being reconstructed. You can see all the clown stuff inside, look. And the outside is being done. You can see the reuse of the Angry Bird stuff as well. Look, nice TNT box over there. I have to say the facias of this is one of my favourites. I absolutely love it. A little toy shop, a little doll on the front. They put a teddy in there last year when they were first doing it. But you can see the bags. Looks like most of it actually might be back in. But there are definitely some dividing walls still to go. This is another space that's usually started some kind of construction by now. We are sort of two days away from September. I appreciate it's still summer, but generally the parks start quite early for Halloween. I mean, in, in the States, for instance, Halloween's already kicked off. And this, of course, is the Morkin Meadow walkthrough. I'd expect it to come back again, really hugely popular and a lovely open space now that all the queue lines gone from the old Saw Alive maze. Be interesting to see what they do here. You know, for a walkthrough, actually, if you have tighter, sort of tighter lanes, you know, some tall hay barrels and uh, things, this would be fantastic. This would take a world of its own at night. This is the first time we've seen this area open as well. It's been under some kind of construction every time we've been there. So we've got a nice new fence now. It'd be interesting to see if we do get the new plaza area for next year. Well, this is still open. I imagine it's to bring cranes and things in rather than anything else, but still hope. We are back down at Hyperia. Now, interestingly, the park have put on their uh, maintenance page, which I'm reading from here, that it may open late every day. <clears throat> now, it didn't open late today, in fairness, and I imagine that's something to do with weather, but come sort of September, mid-September onwards to October, I can imagine when it's particularly bad weather, this will require some extra testing in the morning. I could be wrong, but the park have warned that it may be opening late on days. On top of that, it will close for maintenance between the 22nd and the 27th of September. Probably in preparation for Halloween, to be honest with you. Now, you've got to think as well that uh, many people are like, well, why not do it straight after the summer? Is that the park is actually quite busy right the way up to sort of the 20th of September. That's because colleges don't go back and universities don't go back straight away, which is sort of the demographic for the park. So whilst arguably the end of next week you'll get a really quiet day at Legoland and Chesington, you won't get such a quiet day at Fort Park quite yet. So 22nd to 27th September, Hyperia will be closed. The ghost train shop remains very, very empty still, which is a little bit of a shame. It's, it's not a great look when you come off the ride. Now the ride is on the next closure list, which is the 4th of September, only due to be closed one day will not be open on the 4th of September. For me, this is the ride that would be the next development for me, 100%. <laughs> Obviously, I'm gonna film the other side of the beach, but this brings the last closure in for the year that's been announced, which is, of course, the beach. The Amity Beach closes on the 9th of September, same day as Rumba Rapids, which again, isn't unusual. In fact, I'd argue it's probably a bit later than normal, but it does see through the following weekend after the schools go back. 